Never underestimate the power of a great trailer. The crappiest blockbuster, rom-com, or superhero flick can make a billion dollars at the box office if the promotion is done right. Of course, on the other hand, there are some trailers which failed to impress us, and others that were so god-awful, they actually single-handedly killed any chance of these films turning a profit. With that in mind then, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 movies killed by god-awful trailers. Number 10, Observe and Report. Observe and Report's trailer opens with a security guard called Ronnie trying to stop a flasher showing his bits to the public. Based on that setup alone, you'd safely assume that this comedy is in the same vein as something like Paul Blart Mall Cop. The fact that the cast also includes comedic talents like Patton Oswalt, Anna Faris, and its lead star Seth Rogen compounds this assumption further. But contrary to what the trailer implies, Observe and Report is actually about a troubled security guard struggling with bipolar disorder and living with his alcoholic mother. Although the film is a comedy, of course, it relies more on dark humor rather than the zany antics you'd expect from a regular Rogan flick. Even though Observe and Report is decent, many viewers outright hated it because simply it wasn't what the trailer promised. If the trailer for Observe and Report focused on the more serious tone, then viewers would have known what was in store for them and actually maybe enjoyed the movie a lot more. Number 9. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 To ensure butts are firmly in seats, movie studios ensure that their trailers are drenched in content. And few films exemplify this fact more than The Amazing Spider-Man 2. This three-minute clip has it all, and that's not a compliment. This trailer literally shows everything. The money shots, the best lines, the funniest moments, how each baddie transforms into a supervillain, the final battle, the romantic subplot, the other subplot revolving around Peter's father, which nobody cares about, the Sinister Six spin-off that still hasn't materialized, and a couple of cutscenes for good measure. Hell, even the final shot of the film is in there. Still, although a lot of critics do harp on the fact, and rightly so, that the trailer reveals the movie's final frame, that's not actually the worst part. Because Gwen Stacy's death was supposed to be a shocking twist in the sequel, the filmmakers probably should have done everything in their power to ensure that this plot point was kept secret. Instead, though, The Amazing Spider-Man 2's trailer shows Gwen falling to her death and Spidey trying to catch her. Number 8. The Love Guru You know how a trailer for a comedy is supposed to show the most hilarious moments? Well, The Love Guru kinda does the exact opposite. Although this vanity project from Mike Myers has a few decent gags in there, mostly from Vern Troyer, anything that resembles comedy is suspiciously absent from the trailers. Instead, the promotions for The Love Guru were stuffed with every childish and derivative joke that you could possibly imagine. Awful CGI, atrocious puns, and Ben Kingsley performing an accent that's probably disrespectful to the entire continent of Asia. Yep, all of that is in there, plus Mike Myers doing a silly voice, and it's all kinda depressing. No matter how much you loved Wayne's World and Austin Powers, this trailer was irrefutable proof that Myers' talent for writing and improv had officially run dry, since the once acclaimed comedian is just recycling his old material. The Love Guru ended up tanking so badly, in fact, that Myers was compelled to semi-retire from live-action films for over a decade. Number 7. Warcraft Duncan Jones' Warcraft was far from perfect. Nobody is going to deny that. Nevertheless, this adaptation of Blizzard's influential MMORPG didn't deserve to bomb as badly as it did. Sure, the story was a little lacking, but the CG was breathtaking, the motion capture was top-notch, the action sequences were inventive, and the characterization was surprisingly deep. Too bad, then, that everybody, including the biggest World of Warcraft fans, lost interest in this potential moneymaker when the first trailer dropped. Although there's nothing really wrong with the visuals, the weird killer was that the trailer was accompanied with dubstep music, which jars with the medieval fantasy theme. Like, it might not sound that weird, but imagine if the Lord of the Rings previews were layered with a modern rap number. Picture any of the Harry Potter trailers with, like, Scatman John in the background or something. It would make you think that the filmmakers didn't understand the tone of the source material. As a result, people unfamiliar with the game thought Warcraft was just another generic blockbuster focus tested for the biggest audience, while diehard fans of the game assumed that the adaptation would have no resemblance to the source material. Number 6. Hellboy 
Comic readers were heartbroken when Guillermo del Toro's Hellboy franchise was scrapped and rebooted, with David Harbour taking over the titular role from Ron Perlman. But fans of the Dark Horse Comics' anti-hero wanted to give this reboot a fair shot. I mean, not only did it have a great cast, but Neil Marshall seemed like the perfect director to helm the project, due to his knack for balancing horror and tongue-in-cheek comedy. Unfortunately, when viewers watched the trailer and saw that the first joke fell flat, they knew something was very, very wrong. Even though Harbour can be hilarious in Stranger Things, none of his bantering gags work here, since everything he says and does comes across as forced. Sadly, all this trailer did was make viewers wish that Ron Perlman was still in the role. Perlman's comic timing was so impeccably deadpan that he could make even the cheesiest line work perfectly. Although comic fans wanted to like it, no one was won over by this trailer, and to the surprise of no one, 2019's Hellboy was the least successful installment in the franchise, destroying any chance of a sequel. Number 5. Terminator Salvation and Terminator Genesis The Terminator franchise has never been good at keeping a lid on key plot points. Despite the fact that it would have been amazing to learn that Arnold Schwarzenegger's character was the hero of Terminator 2 Judgment Day while watching the movie, the promos just flat out told you that he was the good guy. Instead of learning from their mistakes, the promotions for the sequels continued to divulge pretty much every plot twist as well. Every commercial for Terminator Salvation reminded viewers that Sam Worthington's character was a secret Terminator, and while Terminator Genesis may have been the nadir of the series, turning humanity's savior John Connor into a Terminator was kind of a cool idea. At least it would have been if the trailers, yet again, didn't spoil it. Even the biggest fans of James Cameron's creation didn't bother checking out these installments because they knew the films contained no other surprises, and that was absolutely bang on the money. And let's look at this franchise as a whole. Do you know what was the most powerful moment in the series post-Terminator 2? Well, that was easily John Connor failing to stop Judgment Day in Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines. And do you know why that moment was so impactful? Because the trailers didn't tell us that it was going to happen. Number 4, Ghostbusters 2016 Because a trailer's purpose is to make the viewer want to watch the movie, it needs to be exciting, eye-popping, and action-packed. However, the promotions also need to be clear what the movie is that they're selling. And despite the fact that most people focused on how unfunny the trailer for the Ghostbusters reboot was, that wasn't the only issue. In the opening moments, a text appears mentioning how four scientists saved New York 30 years ago, and based on that statement, it kind of sounds like this installment is a sequel, right? However, Ghostbusters 2016 is a total reboot, meaning it doesn't take place in the same universe as the original movie. Consequently, viewers couldn't help but ridicule this blunder since the studio itself didn't even seem to know how to advertise their own product. Because of this flub, you'd assume that the next trailer would have more clarity, however, viewers were confused yet again, this time by the title. The second trailer concludes with the words Ghostbusters answer the call. However, it's not clear whether Answer the Call is the film's subtitle or just the tagline. So yeah, have you ever heard of a trailer so incoherent that viewers couldn't tell whether it was a sequel or a reboot and didn't even know what it was called? Number 3. Cats Tom Hooper's film adaptation of Andrew Lloyd Webber's Cats musical was bafflingly bad. In hindsight, it looks like the flick just didn't stand a chance since no one was backing its corner when the trailer premiered. Although you do have to commend the visual effects team for trying to make the feline hybrids look kind of photorealistic, it just sadly doesn't work. If you thought the characters from A Christmas Carol, The Polar Express, and Beowulf fell into the Uncanny Valley, well, cats just tumbled into the Uncanny Universe. Instead of looking cute and cuddly, these Frankenstein kitties can't come across as anything except creepy. Coupled with the fact that this trailer is sprinkled with Rebel Wilson's false slapstick and James Corden's dumb jokes, there's pretty much nothing redeemable here, save for Jennifer Hudson's wonderful rendition of memory. Number 2. The Mummy 2017's The Mummy wasn't just a reboot or the start of a franchise, it was the beginning of a potential cinematic universe, RIP, the dark universe. As a result, it was crucial for the promos to be as epic as possible. And to the trailer's credit, it does show a lot of intriguing imagery. 
An eerily designed sarcophagus, people being ejected from a crashing plane, Tom Cruise's character dying and then being resurrected in a morgue, the titular villain's irises splitting into two. There were some really cool images there. However, there is one pivotal factor missing from the trailer, and that's the sound. And I mean that literally. The studio accidentally uploaded an incomplete version of the teaser, which contained multiple shots with just no audio save for the dialogue. So when the plane crashes, there's no music or sound effects. The only thing you hear is the glutteral noises of Tom Cruise as he's tossed around. The studio did learn of their error minutes after the trailer was uploaded, urging them to have it removed, but it was too late. Too many people had seen the promotional blunder, tarnishing the mummy's reputation beyond repair. Number one, the monsters. Upon watching the trailer for Rob Zombie's The Monsters, everyone had the same thought. Is this a joke? And that's a serious question. Until the movie comes out, we genuinely can't tell. Because the original 1964 TV series was a comedy that poked fun at slice of life sitcoms, we kind of expect Zombies film adaptation to be corny, parodical, and maybe even a little bit outdated. But after watching this trailer, you'd assume that it was made by someone with zero knowledge and experience in filmmaking. The sets are lit so garishly, it looks like you're watching a pantomime. Due to the old-fashioned fonts, the cheesy music, the bargain bin special effects, and the distractingly atrocious green screen, you might even think these decisions were intentionally made by the director. But considering that every joke falls flat, every line of dialogue sounds awful, and every set looks like it was made of cardboard, and it probably was, it's impossible to tell who this movie is even for. So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Are there any trailers that outright killed your hype for a movie dead? And what did you think of this lot? Let me know, and while you're down there, could you please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.